Hello everyone. Uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Carlos Panato. I work for Chainwire, and uh, in Kubernetes I work for uh, SIG Release. SIG Release is the SIG that uh, takes care about the release of Kubernetes and all the tooling around the uh, release engineering, like uh, for taking care of the images, promotions, and uh, all the tools that makes everybody use the Kubernetes. In there. My name is Carlos, and I'm going to pass to my colleague. Yeah, my name is Adolfo Garcia, and I am also a, staff, a software engineer with ChainGuard. Uh, we originally had two more speakers scheduled to be here with us, uh, and for traveling problems, they couldn't be here. So sorry you're stuck with us, but um, we uh, are both uh, tech leads for SIG release uh, for the release engineering sub project, and uh, we're going to do an update on the things we've been working on. Before that, we have Sasha just giving uh, like a few words. Welcome to our talk from SIG release about releasing Kubernetes less often and secure. Unfortunately, I cannot attend at this KubeCon in person, but I'm absolutely sure that Adolfo Carlos and Steve will wrap this session on behalf of Jeremy and myself. I really hope you enjoy this talk, and always feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments. Hey folks. Okay, uh, today we're going to like give some updates and uh, talk about what we did in, like, in the past uh, release and let's say in the past year. We're gonna like take a, like a quick look on the uh, changes we made for the release uh, cadence in the release cycle, and some updates on the release uh, release engineer, and uh, we're gonna like uh, share about the, the work we are been doing like uh, creating a whole map and vision in the CIG release, and like in the end some shouts for the community. Uh, last year we had like a, a release cadence of like a. a Four release per year, and uh, we like we felt that was not that uh, like it was too fast, and uh, like uh, we, the release team that is formed for each cycle was like a, have like a, a hard time like to manage everything. Then we decided to send a release survey to see how the, the community feel about like uh, having less or more releases. And uh, we find out that uh, like the community prefer like to have three releases a year. Then we like that's some justification that we can uh, think about. And uh, we decided to uh, instead of four releases per year, we, now we are uh, running three releases per year. That makes like a, a pace more sustainable for or not only for the release team but also for all the other teams. Last year, uh, we introduced uh, the, in the last cycle, in the 124, the fast uh, forward. And uh, this is, uh, I'm going to give like some explanations. Uh, a few cycles, uh, like I think till 121, 122, we, uh, like when we have the code freeze and create the release branch, we always fast forwarding the master branch to the release branch. Then this was a manual task. And uh, like sometimes uh, like uh, we forgot to fast forward in, in every day and then we miss it and then some conflicts sometimes happen. And then like we decided like not doing fast forward anymore and then doing the like when the cherry pick or the release branch was created, we started doing the cherry pick. Like when we merge things to the main branch, we cherry pick to the release branch. That causes a lot of like uh, overwork, like, like a lot of overhead for the developer, like for the contributors. So every time we need to like approve that PR to get merged to the master branch and then like cherry pick, manually cherry picking all the process. Right, and then we think to reintroduce the fast forward. And then the last cycle, uh, we did like a, a, like a mock uh, job that is, was running for the entire cycle after we have the, the release branch and everything was working. And for this uh, 125 uh, release cycle, we are going to like introduce the no mock in the no mock uh, way. That's going to be fast forward for it. Uh, we have the test grid. Everybody can take a look on the, the job is running, and we also have a, a documentation regarding how that works. And if people are interested, like I, I strongly recommend to take a look on the documentation site. Okay, yeah, so 
Another area of our work has been uh, in actually hardening a little bit the more the, the Kubernetes uh, supply chain. And since, what, about two years uh, ago, we started working on implementing some of the, what are now common words in supply chain security, like SBOMs for the Kubernetes uh, release process. And also the big one around now is that we just finished uh, signing all the images for Kubernetes. Uh, with six stores, so about what uh, one year ago or so, where we started uh, right up about the point when six store was just starting to form. Uh, six store is like a distributed signing uh, project uh, for uh, with a public uh, transparency log, and we started partnering with with them to see and to try to find a way of how we could also implement signing our images. Uh, for years, there have been like issues open and gaps open, uh, trying to implement signing for the artifacts. But uh, we all know how GPG can be hard to to secure uh, to do the key handling sometimes. So when we uh, start uh, seeing about what was going on with Sixtor and the, their plans, and it just seemed like the perfect fit for us. Uh, so right since the beginning, we started uh, looking into how we could integrate that, the, the, the six store tool, tooling and libraries and their infrastructure to secure our releases. So, right, so now uh, Kubernetes 124 was just released, and it's the first one to have their, its, its images signed. Um, and uh, it was like a really a huge effort. Uh, it took a lot of uh, contributors. In fact, since I joined six releases, it's the project that has seen the most people contributing to a single uh, project. Uh, this is just the MVP because we are only have the, we only have like the basic initial tooling to sign the images. There's still a lot of work that has to be done yet. Um, so you can see some, some, I mean, brief facts about it. We had like 55 PRs uh, involving not only the SIG release tooling, but also uh, dealing with, uh, with in Kate's Infra, uh, so big thanks to, uh, to Kate, uh, Kate's Infra uh, folks that uh, really enabled us to, to get this going, uh, and uh, also working on uh, improving the six store tooling as we went because uh, we also had needed the, the the support from their side and to accommodate our needs, and uh, but we finally uh, got it ready. Uh, some of the challenges to build that was the infrastructure, just to make sure that uh, our, our, all, of the, all of the signatures could be like, propagated in a, in a proper way, uh, like doing the impersonation flow, because Kubernetes has, uh, promotes its images, and the image promoter wasn't ready yet to take on the, on the uh, impersonation requirements that we needed to, to have the available, the available IDC tokens to do the signing. So we had to go do there and adapt to the, the current uh, uh, image promotion process, which we didn't want to, to disrupt anything, any, any of the, the, the current uh, process that, that we were using. So it was like a really big deal. I, I was really surprised to see how much fire this got in all, in all of the news outlets. So uh, thank you, Media, for, for covering that. Uh, I feel really humbled for that. Uh, yeah. Just one comment, like if you maintain a project in the Kubernetes community and you want to sign your images or your packets, like come to talk to us and we are glad to help. And uh, the image promoter, promoter, also like if you use the image promoter to promote the images across to, to the case uh, registry, it also sign your image already. Then if you sign so like three, two weeks, if you start using that tool, it signs the, the image for you as well. Yeah, there's, more, there's a little bit more security that we can build into your project if you're uh, if you are interested in signing at build time and still uh, propagating those signatures like we do in Kubernetes. Uh, you can talk to us at any time, show up on the SIG release meetings, and we can get you to to do that. Um, uh, the other is uh, when we build the Kubernetes test bomb, we produce uh, we produce a lot of libraries to to be able to to write the documents. And that tool uh, has been gaining traction. The, uh, some other projects are already doing their SBOMs with our tool, uh, which is great. And we've been gaining more contributors. And uh, for example, Istio recently started doing their, their, uh, their SBOMs with our tool, which makes me very happy. 
Um, and also, this tool is now uh, incubating in the automated compliance tooling tag with the uh, Linux Foundation. So, uh, also, like, a, a, I mean, signs of it getting uh, a little bit more mature. And finally, uh, the other, like, key milestone that we are trying to achieve is making the Kubernetes release process uh, achieve Salsa level three. So, Salsa. Uh, it's, a, uh, a supply, it's a supply chain framework to, that, to enable companies to start securing their, uh, their, their workloads and their, their release process a little bit gradually, so it gives you insight into observability and then uh, making uh, the, the artifacts ever more hard to impersonate, to, to forge and, and secure them. So we are aiming to, uh, to comply with Salsa Level 2 right now. Uh, it, la, the last KubeCon in Los Angeles, we announced that we have reached Level 1. Now with the signing uh, libraries all, uh, almost, at, almost done, we are almost ready to start implementing Salsa Level 2. We, we wanted to, do, to make it to, uh, in Kubernetes 124, but uh, well, uh, we simply didn't get the time. But we're almost there. We just have to finish signing the binaries, the attestations, and the yes bombs, and then we, we are, I think that those are the three remaining for uh, reaching Salsa 2 in the Kubernetes release process. And, um, oh yeah, this, this, this was it, <laughs> okay. And um, next one, oh, branch in. Okay, this is uh, another survey we have out, like we, like, uh, we have the uh, inclusive name uh, working group, we are working like to make all the everything more inclusive, and one of the forties is changing the branch names across the Kubernetes community, and uh, we are planning we are planning to change the KK the Kubernetes Kubernetes branch name from master to main, and this is uh, like a, a big thing that we are planning since uh, end of last year. <laughs> there is a survey you can scan the QR code if you want to fill that survey. Um, we are like collecting results uh, like uh, uh, information because that's, uh, we would like to know the companies are using Kubernetes downstream to see if they're gonna be impacted and then we can plan accordingly for like changing the name. All the, most of the infrastructure for these changes are already uh, done. We just uh, like waiting for these results. They're gonna close on May, end of this, this month. And uh, as soon as the results we like got it, it's looking good for those persons, like for those companies and uh, we are planning to move in like the change this for the when we reach full freeze on 125. Okay, here uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, how we built last year uh, the roadmap and the vision. And gonna, you can scan this if you like uh, uh, check the repository. So I'm gonna quickly show here. We, in the SIG release, we built like a, a roadmap and a vision that makes uh, the community and the SIG release team, like everybody that contributes to SIG release, see what's the vision for the SIG release and uh, what are we gonna focus in. Then we have like the primary focus is the consumable, introspective and secure. Each one we like drill down and open in uh, deliverables we are looking for. For example, we like the, the define some deliverables you want to achieve. That is the salsa compliance, the sign release artifacts, enhance the Kubernetes artifacts management. Like we, we, like we are working in some improvements on the artifact management as well, and be available in other providers as well. And uh, we highly recommend for the other uh, SIG chats and uh, tech leads for the other SIGs to had a roadmap and a vision as well for the R6. And uh, if you need help, like we also, we are here like to help to create the roadmap and a vision. And uh, just the, the size small thank you for everybody that worked uh, like in the past cycle in the past year, helping us to achieve the signing, the salsa, the boom, and the other, other uh, tools we are using like to, to make the Kubernetes release easily for everybody. Uh, if you want to find us and we want to contribute, 
like uh, finders like we Steven and Sasha the chief chefs for the release. Uh, myself, Adolfo, and Jeremy are the tech leads for the CV release as well. You can find us, like we have uh, weekly meetings on Tuesday. I forgot the, the time. I know the time only in the, in the Central Europe time zone, which is 4.30. <laughs> I don't know the, the others, but uh, I think it's easy to figure out. And uh, you can find us also in the uh, Kubernetes Slack, like just a thing uh, that we have the CV release channel. And if you are more interested in the SIG release engineer, in the engineer mm -hmm. part, we have the release engineer uh, channel as well. And Sasha, again. Thank you for listening to our talk. I truly believe that we will have a bright future at SIG release with all those enhancements and improvements. I wish you a happy conference and see you on upstream Kubernetes. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have a little bit, uh, a little bit of time for questions if yeah. What are the challenges around renaming the uh, protocol branch? Uh, the question is what the challenging about the renaming the branch? Uh, for Kubernetes itself, if you think about only Kubernetes, we have like, uh, we can check, I, I think we have more than 50 PRs open on KK, or I think it's much more than that. And uh, renaming, like changing the, the, the branch name, it's kind of easy in GitHub. You just uh, <laughs> go and go to the settings and change and they do everything for you. But the, the problem behind that is like, if you do this, we're going to, uh, pro, we're going to kick out all the jobs uh, for the open PRs. And then we're going to be like a big queue and there might be, we like uh, have some hard time to cleaning up or we don't want to put this uh, high load on the, the pro and uh, have like the people like trying to figure out. There's some workarounds for that is like uh, we're going to move everything that open PR to draft and draft the pro doesn't trigger, you need to trigger manually. And then we're gonna like uh, uh, ask for the, the persons that are gonna review, like move back to from draft to, to red to review and then gonna kick the, the specific one. We're not gonna move to draft and then move everybody. We're gonna just move one by one as needed. For uh, downstreams, maybe they, we can broke this CI, if, but uh, GitHub offers the uh, follow the right directions but you need to uh, certify in your downstream if you can follow that right direction. Usually just change the, the, the branch name is gonna help, but uh, Mike broke CI for the, the companies, we, like we're not sure what, how they are consuming the, the Kubernetes. When do you plan to do that branch rename? Uh, when uh, we reach code freeze on 1.25. It also going to depends on the, the survey results, but so far the results they are like is the, the people are responding uh, match the time frame we are looking for. Any other questions? No? <laughs> okay. okay, thanks so much.